I installed my first drip irrigation system in 2021 because we were going on vacation for a couple of weeks in the summer and I didn't want my plants to die. Now, when I set that up, I did it with an automated timer, one timer for the entire yard, front and back gardens, and they even have different sun exposures and things like that, but it didn't matter. I just had it go on for five minutes, twice a day, whatever it was, and it worked fine. I got home, the plants weren't dead, everything was fine from that perspective, but this year I actually wanted to try a couple of things to make it more automated, more intelligent. I've installed Home Assistant in my house, and so I was looking for not only an automated valve that would work with Home Assistant, but also a soil sensor that would work with Home Assistant. And I found both of them on AliExpress, and I wanted to show you how I set these things up to automate my watering. So I'm gonna explain that coming up. All right, so this is the water valve that um, I got on AliExpress. And it has an activation button here that you can manually open and close the valve with. And you can also use that to pair it to your Zigbee uh, hub, to your home assistant or whatever else you're using. Now, one thing I can say is that it does come with this, this brass insert here that goes from a one inch down to three quarters of an inch. And the only problem with that, and, and then the other side, this is, this is the female side, and this is the male side. And this one's plastic, this one is brass, obviously, you can see that. Um, the only downside is that these things are not the same thread as a garden hose. Even though you would expect that they are, they're not. So what you have to get is these two adapters. And these adapters, this is a female for a garden hose, this is a male for a garden hose, and this adapts the three quarter inch, this is called an MIP thread. Oh, this one is female, so that's FIP, this is MIP, this is male. Those happen to be the exact same threads as these. So I'll put links to these down in the video description. It is unfortunate that they're selling this in a US market and they don't have the right threads on it. Uh, this does add to the cost a little bit, it's not too bad, but it does add to the cost. And then they're adapted and ready to go for a US garden hose. This is really pretty straightforward. The soil sensor, it has three prongs on it. They are protected with these rubber things. You do have to take the rubber things off, obviously, to put it into the soil. And they say put it into the soil as deep as the, um, the plastic is. And these are both obviously waterproof. Well, I shouldn't say waterproof, water resistant to the point that you can have them outside. This is a massive, pretty big thing. I mean, I know it has four batteries in it, but uh, but it's, it's stout, it's heavy. And so is this actually. So both of these devices, um, you can have them work together. These are both the Zigbee devices. I don't waste my time with Wi-Fi devices. So let me come in here to my Zigbee and you'll see I'm just using ZHA and I've got my window box sensor right here and I've also got my front valve right here. And you can see I have a dashboard called water and in here I have two cards, one for the window box, that's the soil sensor in the window box. And then I have another one called front valve. And for the window box, you can see it has soil moisture, temperature, and the battery. Those are the entities that are available there. And for the valves, you've got a switch for watering as well as the battery. So this one is really pretty straightforward. And if I click this, it will turn the watering on and um, on and off very easily remotely from wherever I am, whether I'm at my house or I'm someplace else. But the magic behind this is we actually create automations that make the two of these work together. Now, the only automation that I have right now is I created this drip irrigation. And all it is, is it says, if the front valve changes on or off, I want to send myself a notification on my phone that says front valve switched, and it'll tell me on or off, whatever the state of that front valve is. And that I use for debugging purposes. I don't necessarily have to keep this on, 
but it gives me some peace of mind knowing that the valve is working and it lets me know when you know when the automations are going to trigger obviously it's good for testing now i'm going to create two automations here to make these things work together and the first one that i'm going to do is going to be based on time and what i want to do is i want to check so that this triggers every hour. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use this time pattern. And what I want is I want it to trigger every hour. So I'm gonna put a star there. And I'm gonna say trigger at the top of the hour. So a zero minutes and zero seconds. So that means this will automatically trigger once every hour. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a condition. And this is where I'm gonna actually say, hey, what's the, What's the state of that soil sensor? So I'm gonna use this one here, numeric state. And let me come in here and find, it is my window box. My window box, soil moisture. And I want to know when it is below, I'm gonna say 70. Now that's still pretty high, but whoops, I'm scrolling my mouse and that's not good. So let me put that back to 70 and tab out of that field. Okay, so this says every hour it will wake up and it will check this condition and it will only do the actions when the soil moisture is below 70. So what do we think the action is going to be? Well, it's going to control a device and I'm going to call, this is my front valve and I'm going to turn on the front valve switch. But obviously I don't want it to stay on forever. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put in a delay. I'm gonna say, leave it on for five minutes. All right, and then I'm gonna say device front valve and turn off the front valve switch. And I'm gonna save this as drip irrigation front valve automation. Okay, so what this says is every hour, check to see what the soil moisture is. If it's below 70, turn on the front valve, delay for five minutes, then turn off the front valve. Sounds easy, right? But believe it or not, that's the way you put these two together so that they work. Now, the only other thing is, um, I wanna make sure, because I've, I've kind of got a bit of a programming background. <laughs> so I wanna have a fail safe that if for any reason that valve goes on, I don't want it to ever stay on because it'll just flood my pots and, and the window box. So I'm gonna create another routine here, another automation. And for this one, I'm gonna say, if that device front valve is turned on, and I'm gonna say, if it's been on for 15 minutes, cause that's a long time for my drip irrigation to be on. If it's been on for 15 minutes, I'm then going to add an action and say, turn off the front valve switch. And I'm going to call this drip irrigation front valve failsafe. And even if I turn on that valve manually, if I push the button and I walk away and forget about it, it will turn it off after 15 minutes. All right. So that's, those are the two rules that I needed to create. The one for um, front value changed, again, this one with just sends the notification. This one is kind of optional, but those are the really the two rules that you create and how that soil sensor can actually trigger the front valve. Now, what I did to make sure that this works is I shortened the delay and I changed this uh, soil moisture so that, you know, it was like if it's below 90 or something like that. Um, so I did all the testing that's needed for this. So I know for a fact that these things work okay. And that's the way that it should be. And I also tested the fail safe by shortening it to a minute and then turning it on manually. And it, sure enough, a minute later it turns off. So I know this works as well. So here you can see the soil sensor installed in the window box. And there's a bunch of drippers in the back there. I think there's four of them. And then over here on the side of the house, you can see this is the new valve that I have there. And this is the one that goes to the front. I've also got the line that goes to the back. I have to install the second valve, but this is the first valve. 
And here you can see this is a backflow preventer. I don't know if that's needed or not, but that's a backflow preventer. And this is a um, 10 PSI uh, pressure limiter. And that just makes sure that, you know, if it's too much pressure in your drip lines, you could just um, cause holes and things like that. So that's why I lower that. And I'll put links to these things down in the video description. But so far, so good. Works great. So if you have any questions, you know, leave me a comment as usual and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll see you in the next one.